Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to walk you through how to use intersection observers to add a couple kind of nice features to a landing page. Now we actually worked on this landing page not too long ago and we created this responsive nav bar up here. So that's how it looks on desktop and this is how it looks on mobile. Now we used a class back here to add a dark color to this background whenever we expanded this mobile menu. We can use the exact same class using the intersection observer to add it on whenever we get scrolling down so that it shows up over our text. You'll also notice down below here that things are kind of fading in as needed as we get them in the viewport. We're going to do all of this with intersection observers. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, here we are over here. I've got the project pulled up. You can see that it looks fine. Uh, as I scroll, this nav bar kind of gets hard to see back behind all of this. And then all of this down here is just static, which again, isn't a problem, but it doesn't look nearly as nice as everything fading in slowly. And it's actually not that hard to do with intersection observers. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't we just use something like the scroll position? Well, the problem with that is that you're firing an event every time the user scrolls your page at all. So it's not very performant, and an intersection observer is way more targeted. You're actually going to target a specific element on the page and see when that comes in or out of the viewport. In this case, we're going to look at the header itself and say, hey, when the header gets to like maybe 75 or 80 percent, then I want you to go ahead and fade in this class or add this class of active to the nav. You can see, like I mentioned a second ago, that that adds that background color of dark to this back section. And then we'll do another intersection observer for these other sections. So we're going to say add a class that we're going to add that will allow us to add this kind of fade in animation. So let's do those one at a time. Now, first of all, let me kind of walk you through the intersection observer itself. And I'll put these docs in the description so you can look at them yourself. But basically what we're going to do is write a new intersection observer and it's going to need both a callback function and options. Now you can do that all in line here or you can reference it outside if you want to. Either way, you're going to create a new intersection observer, you're going to pass it a function, and you can pass it options if you want. Then to actually invoke it or call it, what you'll do is you will write observer, or whatever the name is that you gave your new inter intersection observer, dot observe, which is a method that lives on that, and then you will pass it some target to watch. And whenever that target either enters or leaves the viewport, then you will trigger that callback function and any options associated with it. All right, so if that didn't make sense, let me walk you through it here briefly. All right, let's come back over here. And I've got a section down here for my intersection observer. All of this is what we did uh, the last project where we added this mobile nav to kind of click this in and out. Now, if I come in here, we already have reference to the nav, which is good because we're going to need to add this class of active. So let's come down here. And the first thing we need is to have that new intersection observer. So let's call this something like uh, nav OBS. We'll say new uh, intersection observer. And again, we can pass it a callback. And again, it needs a callback, which is a function, and then it needs an options object. Now you can do this inline, or we could reference it outside. So maybe let's start with it outside, and then we'll add it back inline here in a second. So we'll say callback, um, and actually let's call this something specific. So we'll say nav callback, and this will be a nav callback. And this is just going to be a function. It's going to take in certain entries. In this case, it'll just be one entry, but let's go ahead and console.log the entries. And then we do need something for this, uh, these options. So we'll say const nav options, and we'll just pass in an empty object right now. And we'll worry about that in a second. And this needs to be nav options. Now, how do you actually call this? Well, like I said a second ago, you're going to start with this nav OBS, the thing that you actually created, dot, and then the method is observe. And we're going to pass it whatever target we want it to observe. In this case, it's our header tag. So we can declare the header tag outside, or we could just say document.query selector, and we can just declare the header. So let's come over here, open up the console, and it turns out that spelling helps. So intersection, intersection. There we go, all right. So now we're getting this entry here, and like I said, it's an array that we're gonna get back. And even though we're only passing in a single thing, we're going to get back an array. It just has one thing in it, the zero index. Now, if you look over here, we get some really important information that we're getting with this intersection observer that's being fired. The, probably the most important for us to note is this, is it intersecting? All right, so yes or no, is it in the viewport at all? Now, by default, even one pixel will trigger this to, to mark it as true. We can get the ratio of how much of it is on the screen. Zero would be nothing, one would be the entire thing, and then any decimal in between that is the percentage it's on the screen. You also get the bounding rec for the thing that you're targeting, that you're looking at, and if it's not fully on the screen, if this is less than one, then this intersection 
intersection rect would be different because it's only going to be the amount of the header that's on the screen and exactly what its dimensions are. You've got some other important things, but probably the other thing to note here is the target. This should be the same as whatever you passed in to be observed because that is your target after all. Okay, so that's the info we need. Let's go ahead and come back up here though. And now that we know it's our zero index, it's the only thing we're passing in. What we want to look at, look at is if it is intersecting. So we'll save that and now we see it's true. Let's get rid of this over here. And now if I get this off of the screen at all, it should fire a second time and now it should be false. If I come back on the screen, it should now be true, false, true, false, true. Okay, so we've got that all set up and ready to go. Now what we can do is use that to trigger whether or not we add this active class. Probably the easiest thing to do then is just to trigger it with a, a toggle on that class. So we're going to grab the nav, and again, we declared that up top, so we don't have to redeclare it down here. We'll say dot class list dot toggle, and the class we're going to toggle is active, and then we can just pass in as a second argument here, this uh, entries is intersecting. And what we actually need to do is if it's not intersecting, because if uh, we trigger it right away, then as soon as it's in the viewport, it's going to add that class, which would be right now. And what we want it to do is when it leaves to actually trigger it. So when it is false is the first time we want it to trigger it on. And then when it's true again, we want it to take it off, etc. So let's save that. And now you can see it should stay off until I get all the way right here. All right, and then it should add that class, and that's what it does. If I come back up here, now it should disappear. Now, I mentioned that we've got options we can pass in, and the options are going to allow us to tell it exactly when it should consider it as being on or off the viewport. So let's come back over here, and let's see where are our options. Let's just search for it, options. All right, here we go. So we've got these options, and they're showing you here that you've got root, root margin, or threshold you can pass in. Now the root is basically the element that is being used as the viewport. By default, it's the entire viewport, but you can actually set it to something other than that if you want to. Most of the time you're not gonna use this, so I'll leave this alone for now. Uh, the other thing is this root margin. Now, as you can see here, this serves to grow or shrink each size of the root elements bounding box. In other words, you can kind of artificially grow or shrink the size of the viewport in the browser's views so that it will either add or remove classes or whatever you're wanting to do within your callback earlier or later than otherwise would be the case. You just need to add this in quotation marks, but then you can add it very much like top, right, bottom, left, or you can just do one value for all of it. You can also use percentages in the root margin. Now what we're gonna do is use this threshold. This is a single number between zero, which would mean even one pixel is visible, um, or one, which would mean the entire thing, the entire target, in this case, the header needs to be on the screen before you would consider this as visible. So we can use this threshold to decide that. Now, if that's a little confusing, they've got a nice little um, example down this way, All right, right down here. So they're showing you how this is calculated down this way. So as you can see, it says here that the first box has a threshold for each percentage point visibility that is the intersection threshold array is zero, one, all that kind of stuff. All right, so as we move here, you're gonna see that it's all on the screen. And then as we move, it says 98%, 94 down here, 97. So it's telling you what percentage of it is on the screen still. This third box here, let's look at this one now, 10% of visibility, zero, 10, 20. All right, so as we scroll, you're gonna see 98 right here, 97, 96, now we're about halfway of this being on the screen. So we can use that percentage of the threshold to decide basically when we're gonna trigger that active class. So if we come back over here, I'd say, you know, as we look at this screen size, maybe like 75% is when we're gonna start triggering that active class. It's a pretty slow animation, so I wanna trigger it a little bit early, maybe 85%. So let's come in here and in our options, we'll just pass uh, threshold and we'll pass in 0.85. Comma. So now if I save this and I get 85% of this header down the screen, it should start to trigger that on, and it does. Maybe you want to change that and make it a little bit less, so we could say 75%, and there it is right there. So 75% is a little bit better. And then as I come here, and it stays on the whole way, and as I move back up, it should take itself back off. So perfect, that's working just as we'd expect. So that's the first thing we're going to do is just uh, let this nav bar back round, come on and off. I mentioned that you don't actually have to have this as a separate thing. You can do it all in line. So let's do that now just to show you what that would look like. So we'll do entries. And this is just going to be an arrow function. And what we can do is just take this right here and drop it in here. And in fact, this is short enough. We don't even need this. So 
Just get rid of it like that. Same thing with this nav options. We can just take this right out of here and let's just add this in uh, curly brackets. Since it's an object, we'll get rid of all of that. And in a neat little line here, we've got the same exact thing, just in line. So if I scroll here, you'll see it comes on and off as I get through there. Now, because that animation is a little slow, again, that's why it's coming in a little late. So let's change that maybe to like uh, back to 85% or so. That way, even if they're scrolling fast, it gets on pretty quickly. All right, so that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is add a, a special class that will add an animation to these carts. So let's first of all write that. So we'll come over here, and I'm actually just going to copy and paste it in because we're not really talking CSS today. So let's come at the bottom down here, and I'll just paste in what I've got. All right, and I'll save that, and you'll notice that everything over there disappears, and this is why. Uh, everything starts with an opacity of 0, and I'm going to transform, translate 3D it down. Now, so X, Y, and the Z position. Now, I'm using 3D because it's more performant, but you could just also use translate Y. That would work just fine. Now I've got a transition here on both the transform and the opacity. Whenever anything with the class of fade up also has a class of faded, then we get opacity one and we move this back to the zero position. Now, if I were to go over to my HTML, all I've done is I've added that fade up class on all of these sections that I want. Now, the nice thing is because each thing is going to be its own intersection observer, when I come to like these individual cards, I've got the cards themselves fading up and I've also got inside of them, the images fading up. So that timing will be slightly different because the percentage of this little icon on the screen versus the percentage of the card on the screen will be different. All right, so let's come back to our JavaScript file, which is named nav because that's how the last project was set up. Let's go ahead and write the same kind of thing. So this time we're gonna write a new observer. Let's call this fade up uh, observer and we'll pass a new intersection let's see if we can spell it correctly intersection observer i mean i could have just selected it that would have helped and then let's write this all in line since we're used to that now and we'll call this entries again you don't have to call it that we are going to want some options as well so i'll add that in line here as well just for now now let's console.log the entries and then come down here now in this case we do want to call that fade up observer but we want to call it individually for each of those elements with the fade up class on them so let's say document.query selector all and we're going to look for everything with the fade up class. And then we'll say for each of these, let's just call them L's. I want to do fade up observer dot observe. And we're going to pass it that L. So now let's save it. Jump over this way. Now you're going to see I'm getting all this. And as I move, I'm getting these fired each time one of those classes comes or those things with the class of fade up comes in and out. So let's look at one of these. Let's look at this one with two in it. So it's going to tell me exactly what it is that's being targeted. Uh, so the thing that's being passed in, the L that's being passed in, whether or not it's intersecting, you can see now it's saying false. Let's come all the way back up top and refresh. And now immediately it fires, like it, it says, and then as you move, it'll fire. So none of these should be true. They're all off the screen. But as I were to scroll, we're going to eventually get one that comes on. And it does. So this first kind of card should be intersecting. And if I come in here and look at zero, it's saying true. It is intersecting. So what I want to do in the callback is each time any of these intersect, I want to add the class of faded. If you'll remember in our CSS, when it has fade up and faded, that's when you actually get to see it. So let's come over here and we'll say entries dot for each. We'll call this entry. Now, what do we want to do in here? Well, we first of all want to check, is it intersecting with the viewport? If it is, then what we want to do is add a class of faded and we actually want to stop observing it because once it animates on once, I don't want it to animate on and off every single time they scroll. So let's first of all write that if statement. So if the entry dot is intersecting, so that's the property of is intersecting. If that is true, then here's what we want to fire inside this if block. We'll say entry dot target because remember again, it's whatever this is right here, the entry itself, and I want to look at this target property dot class list dot add, and I want to add the class of faded. Now here, because the thing that we're watching is also the thing we're doing actions on, that's why we're using this dot target. Whereas up here, we're toggling something totally different. We're toggling the nav that's outside of everything. So we didn't really care uh, about this header. We just wanted to use it to trigger something on the nav. But in this case, we're actually using the thing that's being passed in as the target to actually change something on it, which is why, again, we're adding it right there. So the first thing we're going to do is add it as faded. And the second thing we're going to do is unobserve it. So we can just pass in fade up observer, which is the observer, which again is naturally passed in whenever you're using a callback. 
That's what we saw on the docs a second ago. So fade up observer dot unobserve, which is another method that lives on this. And what do we want to unobserve? Well, the entry dot target. So the actual target, we want to say, hey, this specific card, stop observing. So if I save that and come over here, immediately you see that pulls in. Let's get rid of this here. And as I start to scroll, these things should all pull in. Now here's what happens if I don't do this right here. So let's get rid of this. Then as I come back, you're gonna see that each time it's going to stay on because I've already added that class. So nothing's happening more in the UI. But if I were to come back over here and let's just say console.log the entry, then it's actually still firing every time these things come in and out of the screen. So I'm just wasting you know, CPU that I don't need to waste. So that's why we're unobserving these as they move. So now, if I even if I were to come in here, let's do that. Console.log the entry, and let's scroll at the top. So we're getting them all individually. All eight of them are showing in down here when we first load the screen, and they should all say is intersecting false. But then as I scroll, now you're gonna see that they're coming in as true, true, true. And now that I'm at the very bottom, we should get no more coming in because they've all already fired and then unobserved themselves here. Now I wanna make two final adjustments. First of all, let's come over here and if I refresh, then immediately this one pulls in. And really what I want it to do is to wait a little bit. So that's where these options are gonna come in place. So I could say something like threshold, and then let's say like when 25%, so 0.025% of it is on the screen, that's when I wanted you to fade it in. It's not yet, and let's see right now it's on the screen. So that's one way to do that. We could also pass in our root uh, margin, and this can be a pixel value or it can be something else. So let's do something like negative 300 pixels. All right, so if I do this, and again, oops, this needs to be in quotation marks, so negative 300 pixels. Actually, let's make this more like 30 pixels. And then as I scroll here, you're gonna see that what I need is for I need 30 pixels of it off the screen. There it is right there. So that's another way to do that. Uh, the thing with pixels is, that, you know, then you're stuck depending on the viewport. That might be smaller or larger, depending how you've set up your CSS. Now again, you can do percentages, so we could just come in here like we did with, with the threshold and do like 25% or 0.25 is what we did for the threshold. And that should act very much the same, but this actually needs to be negative, oops, sorry. So that way, as I scroll, it extends that viewport down a little bit and then it pops in. So either way you'd like to do it works just fine. That might be a little bit too large for my liking, so maybe more like, I don't know, 15 maybe? And let's come back up and see what that looks like. And as I start to scroll, there it is, it pops in. So that works just fine as well. So the root margin, that's how that works. And again, you can pass in different values depending on how your scrolling is working. So you could do top, you know, right, left, bottom, whatever. But most of the time, you're probably just going to stick to one like that and assume that the root margin is just shrinking everything or making everything on the screen expanded. All right, finally, the last thing, whenever you have animations like this, I think it is important to just respect people's preferences. And uh, there's a nice little reset by Andy Bell, this modern CSS reset. Let's just go ahead and grab, he has a nice little way to do this. So removing all animations, transitions, and everything that people don't want if they have their uh, prefers reduced motion set to reduced. So let's come over here and let's just add that in down here. And now if I come over this way, I don't have that set on my machine, so everything should still fade in. But if I open up the terminal and hit Command, Shift, P, and I can do Reduce, prefers Reduce Motion and emulate that. And now if I refresh, if I close these uh, things, it will stop emulating that. So I have to actually leave that up. But now you can see they just pop in immediately. So if somebody doesn't want motion, then it won't trigger that motion. It also means that all these... Uh, you know, this coming on and off is very sudden when it pops in and pops off, but that's okay. That's what they want. Now, if I were to shut this down, then it stops emulating and now everything will scroll back in as we expect. I hope this was a help to you in how you might use intersection observers to add just a little bit of professionalism to landing pages or sites that you're using. Not only is it great for performance, but you can also customize it with those options. Now, there are way more advanced use cases for using the Intersection Observer. For instance, you might watch the last element in a series of elements, and then when you get there, load in 10 or 15 more and have essentially an infinitely scrolling page as you just fetch more data each time you get to the bottom of whatever you've already got loaded in the DOM. If you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know. Again, all the code for this will be in the description. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.